Hello there, today we will be talking about cooling with trees. Did you know that you can use the hatred of trees of growing in water to cool down your gases or even your steam turbine down to working temperatures? So let me explain how to. An arbor tree can use all nine tiles that it is in. It can have up to five branches. We are using only four branches in this setup here. The arbor tree itself needs an atmosphere to grow. The middle tile here is a vacuum. So we are using this water tile down here as an atmosphere for the arbor tree, which works perfectly fine if you also have the right body temperature of the natural tile and of the liquid. If you click on the arbor tree, you can see under properties the temperature of the tree itself. Every time one of these branches grows, the branch will grow at a fixed temperature of 25 degrees. And as you've just seen, if it grows its branch and the branch gets destroyed, the heat that this branch accumulated will get destroyed as well. That means if I heat up those tiles right here, then you can see that the temperature is going down. Not just from evening out here, but from the tree branches growing and destroying the heat inside of these tiles. And that is the trick that we are using to cool down the next setup. In the next setup we will be introducing heat to metal tiles, which then transfer the heat to those tiles, which then transfers the heat to the growing branches until they get destroyed and regrow at a fixed 25 degrees Celsius. This here is set setup. We do have two arbor trees, one to the left and one to the right. Both are the leading heat. We do have 300 grams of crude oil down here and a lot more petroleum up there. Exactly 100 kilogram of petroleum up here. If you use too much, the branches will stop growing completely, not deleting any heat. So don't use too much liquid. The crude oil down here is used as an atmosphere for the arbor tree. The middle tile is a vacuum to stop the heat transfer to the tree itself. Because we want to keep the tree in its livable range between 15 and 40 degrees Celsius and because this is a vacuum and this here isn't connected to anything that can distribute its heat to these tiles, it will always stay at the fixed temperature that you build it or that you planted it. This tile up here is a vacuum to not transfer any heat to the dirt tile. Like I said, we want to keep the tree in its livable range. And all of these bridges are here to transfer the heat over. I may have overdone it a little bit with these. But they do help a lot with the thermal conductivity. And also as you can see back here, there's a temp shift plate behind that, made out of copper in this case. The tiles here are made out of aluminum. So what does this setup here represent? Well, we do have 500 degree hydrogen gas here, which is always at 500 degree because I put in a shitload of it. The hydrogen is then pumped through the metal tiles here in the middle and dropped off in this infinite storage up here. The right side makes use of the trees in cooling down the hydrogen and the left side was a carbon copy of the right side, just without the trees. When I started this setup, as you can already see, the left side turned the dirt into sand and turned the crude oil into petroleum because the whole side heated up a lot more than the right side. I did measure a few values here. The control tile, always this tile. What heat does this tile have at which cycle? Same here for the right. And what is the output temperature of the hydrogen? Always measured at this tile before entering the infinite storage. To the left, for example, we do have 496 degrees 0.8 and at the right we only have 140.4 degrees Celsius. So how long has this been running? We go to the thermo aqua tuner, click on properties, check the age, 115 cycles, 0.6. Meaning you can use six trees to cool down 500 degrees Celsius hydrogen to a nice 140 degrees Celsius hydrogen at one kilogram of hydrogen per second. I also did the same for 100 degree oxygen and made two nice graphs for you that I will show you on the screen right now. The graph shows the following, the input temperature of the hydrogen at 500 degrees Celsius, which is the red dotted line. That is also the highest temperature that the whole system could theoretically reach. The control tile temperature is the temperature of the left setup at each cycle that I measured it, whereas the tree tile temperature is the tile to the right, which should hopefully be cooled by our arbor tree system. The control hydrogen output temperature is the temperature of the hydrogen measured to the top left and the tree setup hydrogen output temperature is the temperature of the hydrogen to the top right at every cycle that I actually measured it. What we can clearly see now is that the control side which is uncooled skyrocketed in heat up to 400 degrees Celsius then turned all the crude oil into petroleum and turned the dirt into sand which actually made the temperature drop for a few cycles 
only to then rise together up to around 500 degrees Celsius, which they reach at around cycle 73. It could have already been sooner, but I just didn't measure at that time. And what we see down below at our arbitrary setup is that both places I measured at, the tile as well as the hydrogen output temperature in the tree setup, even out at around cycle 7. The metal tile reaches around 172 degrees Celsius and the output hydrogen temperature 140.5 degrees Celsius, giving us an almost 360 degrees Celsius temperature difference by just using 6 arbitraries, which is pretty amazing. I also did the same thing with oxygen. I put in 100 degrees Celsius oxygen and the system output 32.1 degrees Celsius oxygen after around 7 cycles. If you use any other stacked liquids, other amounts of liquids, other materials for the metal tiles, not the same amount of bridges, your values will vary. So if you want exact numbers, you gotta test that on your own. Other use cases could be a setup like this. The top here is just to represent your base using up energy. You can get rid of that for now. And this lower setup is here to show you the cooling power of one arbitrary in such a setup. Both of these steam turbines run at around 170 to 180 degrees Celsius. This is set to 170 degrees. The doors close if it drops below that. A heat spike will appear even though there's a lot of steam inside of it. Let's check this. Around 500 to 1000 kilograms per tile. Giving you the option of cooling down your steam turbines without the use of an active aqua tuner setup. Be aware though that these additional are passively cooled by their own output water. The steam turbine puts water out at 95 degrees Celsius and we use that to help with the cooling. We did a few tests with this setup. You can either have two self-cooled steam turbines, so with the help of this here, at around 170 to 180 degrees Celsius, or you can have a single steam turbine at 200 degrees, meaning you get the full 850 watts of power out of it without it overheating. Or you can have a setup like this without a self-cooling, but then only run it at 180 degrees Celsius. And that is the cooling power of just a single arbitrary. And that's it for today. Just wanted to share my findings with you. If you're interested in more of these kind of videos, check out the Luma Raw channel. And if you want the more edited kind of videos, check out the Luma Plays channel. And if you feel especially generous, check out the Patreon. Love you guys and Luma out.